back with a bang. Hallelujah. Right, we are going back to the beginning, beloveds of God. Amen. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So we understand that God is a creator. Hallelujah. He is a creator. The first time we know about God, he comes as a creator of our lives. Amen. That means that we are in a season of creativity. Many of you are going to flow in that gift in the mighty name of Jesus because we are made in the image and the likeness of God. Hallelujah. So we know that you are created to function in creative ability, beloved of God, because God introduces himself to you as a creator. Hallelujah. So that means that you have you already have creative content to make your life what you are believing for in the name of Jesus. You will see as we go forward in the text, you will find that everything that you need is on the inside of you and everything that you need was prepared for you. Before we are even introduced to Adam and Eve, God has already prepared prepared everything hallelujah so you find that there's a song that says we will never settle for less amen because why we understand that god has already given us everything when he created the heavens and the earth when he created everything that i'm going to speak about today he wasn't just creating it he was creating it for adam and eve and he was creating it for us hallelujah the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form is your life without form is your life without shape amen because every woman every man is called to be shaped by god you are the you are the clay he is the potter hallelujah so if you are saying you cannot see the shape of where who you are you cannot see the shape of what you are to become understand that i'm not talking about your physical shape i'm talking about your spiritual shape hallelujah every person has their own spiritual shape according to hallelujah what god has put on the inside of you so when you see that your life is without formation you go back to the former of all things hallelujah he is the one that forms amen hallelujah and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of the living God moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. So we see now that he doesn't move upon the face of the earth he moves upon the face of the waters because the waters beloved of god represent flow the waters represent waves of glory hallelujah the water represents the anointing so when we speak of the holy spirit amen he is always connected to water and not land amen but you find that he creates in such a manner that you are able to step on both listen very carefully number five verse five Okay, verse 3, and God said, let there be light. Why do we need light, beloveds of God? Amen. You must always question everything that God said, let there be. Find out why do we need it. Amen. So he says, let there be light. Because I want you to know that without light, there is no growth, isn't it? You will find, beloveds of God, that there is need for darkness and there is need for light. Light is for you to see where you are going. When God says, I'm going to enlighten your mind with the knowledge of eternal things, what he is saying, I'm going to light up your life so you are able to see. The reason why blind Bartimaeus life was not growing is because he was blind. Are we together? Blindness hinders growth. Blindness and where you cannot see, it, it causes you to fall in the pit. The Bible says if the blind lead the bl blind, they will eventually fall into the pit. So that's why God is called the father of lights. Amen. When you move around the face of this earth, you are not moving as darkness, but you are moving as light. Hallelujah. The light of God is shining upon you. Amen. You are the city seated upon the hill. You can no longer be hidden. God says, I can, you cannot hide a candle under the bed. Amen. It is meant to be on the table. Praise the Lord. And that way it will be able to radiate light. Amen. Wherever you go, you are called to scatter darkness, beloveds of God. There is a need for darkness and there is a need for light. Everything needs balance, beloveds of God. Hallelujah. You will see that the light is needed in order for something to break break forth and break through. We see, hallelujah, that the darkness, hallelujah, is there to cover you for a season, but the light is there to cause you to break out and break through. Hallelujah. You will find that the seed will come out of the ground. Praise the Lord. And it will begin to reach towards the light. Why? Hallelujah. 
the light represents reaching forth to God. It represents, hallelujah, looking directly at God. So we are like a seed on this earth, beloved of God, hallelujah. And we grow by reaching out to God, by reaching out to the light, the greatest light, hallelujah, in the universe. Praise the Lord. So understand that there is a season. And when God said, let there be light, hallelujah, that means that you have to shine your shine in this generation. You have to shine forth and show forth in this generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you radiate wherever you go? Hallelujah. Is there a glow about you? Is there something about you? An X factor about you that people are drawn to you? Because light draws people to you, beloved of God. Hallelujah. You know that you have light if people are coming closer to you. And also, you know that you have light if darkness also wants to come to you. Because light calls forth both. Amen. The reason for darkness and light, amen, is so that light can always overcome and that God can show forth in a manner that the enemy has always choice to, has no choice but to bow. So he said, let there be light because he understood that Adam and Eve need light. Hallelujah. How are they going to tend to the garden if they cannot see what they are doing? So let there be light. The reason why God gave you light, beloved of God, is for your growth. You need to grow. Spiritually, on this earth, you need to grow. Hallelujah. And you need to stretch. When he says, I'm going to stretch you, what he is trying to say is, the reason why I've given you light is to stretch forth. That means that where you feel you can make it to, you can actually surpass it. You can actually overcome that level and go to your greater in the mighty name of Jesus. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Amen. And the evening and the morning were first day. You need darkness, beloved of God. The reason why you need darkness, because darkness tells you to rest. Understand that when you are facing warfare and confusion, that is a season of darkness, you are supposed to rest. Are we together, beloved of God? You are not supposed to be running helter skelter. You are not meant to be having sleepless nights in times of darkness. You are supposed to be resting. Because when you rest, God will rise up and fight your battle. We understand that the light is for working. That is the time that most people work from 8 to 5, isn't it? Hallelujah. It is in the daytime that most people work and then it in the nighttime they rest. If they do not get enough rest, they become restless. They begin to lose weight. They begin to break out in, in, in with skin issues. They become stressful, irritated. Are we together, beloveds of God? So you find that darkness represents rest. Attack represents rest. When the four Hebrew boy, the, the three Hebrew boys went in, hallelujah, to the fire, they rested. Am I correct? You didn't see them running around saying, oh, oh, I'm going to get burnt. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, I'm going to get burnt. No, they rested. Hallelujah. When Daniel entered into the lion's den, he rested. I want you to know, beloved of God, that when attack comes your way and you are not able to handle that attack, rest. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hallelujah. God wants you to rest. God wants you to rest. Amen. Even if the demon has come into your room and said, hey you, hey you, hey you dude, hey you girl, I'm going to destroy you. Wow, wow. Rest. Hallelujah. You haven't got time for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand that you are in the weighty presence of the Lord. You are in the Shekinah glory of God. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. Hallelujah. So God gave you light to, to move and light to see and light to grow. And God also gave you darkness to rest. Hallelujah. And the morning and the evening were the first day. Hallelujah. God saw the light and it was good. Amen. So we've seen that everything that God said is good is still good today. There's no change. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, and he says, let there be a permanent in the water, midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Amen. And he made the permanent and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above. And it was so. Hallelujah. And he called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Hallelujah. And he called the dry land earth and the gathering of the waters he called the sea. And he saw that God was God saw that it was good. So this part we are seeing that there has to be separation in your life. Amen. 
You have to put your priorities in order. Hallelujah. We see that there is the heaven, the earth, and the sea. Praise the Lord. God separates them. He says they, they are to function together and work together for good. Hallelujah. But they are separated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you find, beloveds of God, hallelujah, that your life has different separations. One part of your life, you call it marriage. Hallelujah. And so many, some of you are married and that is a separation. Hallelujah. That is a part of your life that you are saying, this is the place where I get to spend time with a loved one. I get to commune with the one that I love. I get to produce with the one that I love. It is a separation. Hallelujah. You cannot take your marriage and go and share it with other people. Are we together, beloved of God? It is yours and yours alone. You have separated it for yourself. Praise the Lord. Nobody is supposed to even touch it. Nobody is supposed to even come near it. Hallelujah. So that is a separation in one department of your life. Another department is money and work. Hallelujah. Do not put marriage and money and work together. Are we together, beloved of God? Hallelujah. Because there is a season of enjoyment. There is a season of work. So we find, beloved of God, that the money one, there are days that you are going to work on your finances, work on what you are doing and where you are going. Hallelujah. You will not mix it with romance. It is separated from the bedroom. Hallelujah. That one is for the table. That one is for the desk, beloved of God. Hallelujah. You cannot separate. Hallelujah. You cannot put them together, but they all work together for your good. Are we together? So your marital bed is like heaven. Hallelujah. If it is not like heaven, I don't know. Amen. So that is your heaven, your marital area. That is where you 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 are you are in the arms of the one that you love, etc. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Then there is the sea. Praise the Lord. That represents flow. That is finances, financial flow, financial breakthrough, opportunities, doors are opening onto you. Hallelujah. That one day it is also separated. Praise the Lord. Then there is family. You are investing in your children investing in your mothers your fathers that is family that is another separation hallelujah there is time for that as well praise the lord so you find that beloved of god there are different areas of your life different departments of your life but they are all one they all work together so heaven and earth hallelujah and the sea is there to work together for your good no wonder god said it is good hallelujah and then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and every he earth yielding seed and fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed from after its kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after its kind and God saw that it was good. Amen. So you'll find that many of you beloveds of God, amen, hallelujah, you have been given seed, amen, because the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. So every man under the sound of my voice, every woman under the sound of my voice, you have a seed, hallelujah. Some of you have a seed in your mind, amen, and if you begin to develop that seed, it's going to become great, praise the Lord. And I want you to know, beloveds of God, yes, Jacqueline, yes, we are, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So you find that seed is important because inside the seed is, is the, 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 the overflow. Inside the seed is multiplication. Hallelujah. So here we see that God picks the right seed. Hallelujah. To plant where he is positioning Adam and Eve. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you find, beloved of God, that in the seed, amen, if you plant a seed, it will produce a hundredfold. It will, it will produce more seed. It will produce after its kind. Hallelujah. You need to be asking yourself tonight, what do I need in my life? Amen. So I am able to produce it after its kind. Are we together? There are different types of seed, beloveds of God. Amen. And each person, according to your own uniqueness, you know what type of seed you need. A seed will always produce after its kind. Hallelujah. It will always bring forth, be it a plant, be it grass, be it a tree, an orange tree will always produce oranges. Hallelujah. It will never produce apples. Praise the Lord. So you need to ask yourself, the seed in my 
life. What is it producing? If it is producing bitterness, stop watering it. If it is producing an anger, stop watering it. If it is producing joy, water it. If it is producing peace in your life, water it. Hallelujah. You need to understand that whatever seed you have in your life will always produce after its kind. It will not stop. Stop. So it's either going to be a generational blessing to you or a generational curse. Are we together? You will find that those that are planting seed of discord, they shall be discord everywhere, everywhere. Why? It produces after its kind. Are we together? But those that are planting seeds of favor, they will see that seed produce favor after favor after favor after favor. Hallelujah. God knew that the type of seed I need, hallelujah, they start on, on grass level. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand, beloved of God, that grass is very important. Did you know that grass is very important? Hallelujah. You will walk on grass barefoot and it will not hurt you. Amen. The reason why God said, I need to create grass. Because wherever Adam wants to walk, hallelujah, they must, he must walk freely. Remember, Adam was naked, beloved of God. He had no shoes. Hallelujah. So God loves us so much that he, he even works on the ground for you. Hallelujah. He will work on the ground for you. He says, let me produce grass. Hallelujah. And that grass must keep on producing. Because in the long run, Santa is coming. And Linda is coming. And Jacqueline is coming. And I don't want them to trample on snakes and scorpions. I want them to walk on grass. Hallelujah. So we see, beloved of God, that God started at level, at foot level, because feet represent direction. Hallelujah. And he says, I do not want my, my sons and daughters to enter into seasons uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Have you ever walked on gravel, beloved of God? Have you ever walked on gravel barefooted? Have you ever walked on ground when it's so hot? Beloved of God, hallelujah. One day I stepped out, I said, I'm not wearing shoes. I don't like to wear shoes. Amen. I'm not wearing shoes. I'm going to just walk across the road from here to there and I'm going to get to my destination. And beloved of God, hallelujah. As soon as I put my foot on the ground, I was, woo, 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 woo. I was running now because of the heat of the ground. Sometimes, beloved of God, you need grass. Hallelujah. In order for you to get to your destination comfortably, God said, I'm creating grass. Hey, I need my daughters and my sons to walk in style in the month of April. I need them to walk in that direction. Hallelujah. Without any confusion. Glory be to God. Then we see, beloved of God, amen, from the grass, amen. He went to the fruit tree. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Because he says that my sons and my daughters are called to produce fruit. They have to be fruitful. I prophesy that this shall be a month of fruitfulness unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will be fruitful and you will multiply. Hallelujah. Now, you see, there is a difference between grass and a tree. God likens you to a tree. Hallelujah. Why? Because you have to be deeply rooted. You may start off looking like a little flower. Every tree looks like a little flower in the beginning. Hallelujah. Small, 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 small. But it has so much potential to become great. Hallelujah. It produces heavy, heavy fruit. Amen. Fruit of substance, beloved of God. And when it produces fruit, hallelujah. That fruit can even be imported from Africa to America. Why? Because they will say it is sought after. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. I want you to know that I am an import. Hey. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God has imported me into your lives all the way from Africa. <laughs> into your house, into your room, into your kitchen, into your lounge. Hallelujah. I am a tree of fruitfulness. You are a tree of fruitfulness, beloved of God. Hallelujah. You are fruitful. He says, you are that tree planted by the riverside. You will produce great fruit in season and out of season. Whether you feel like it or you don't, you are a producer and not a consumer. You will produce, hallelujah, after your kind. You will produce in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, hallelujah. He says, you are a tree. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches, hallelujah. So number one, what does God do when he sees that you are a tree? He begins to nourish your root, hallelujah. Because if anything tries to cut you down, hallelujah, you will flourish again and you will sprout again. If anything tries to bring you down, if they try to remove all the fruit from your tree, you will produce 
produce more fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. God says, let me go for the root. Let me water the root of my sons and daughters. Let me fertilize and cultivate them. Hallelujah, even if they are pruned. No matter. The, the, the weather changes and water does not come they shall still produce in the name of Jesus we declare hallelujah and the evening and the morning were the third day and God said it was good somebody say it was good and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let there be for signs and seasons and for days and years Hallelujah. So number one, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The reason why God created two lights are for signs and seasons. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will see that the sun, which is the greater light, is the one that governs the day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we see, beloveds of God, that the greater light is there to, to usher us. Amen. Whenever we see the breaking of the day, whenever we see the sun, hallelujah, we know that we get to live another day. Because the the sun is life, beloveds of God. Without the sun, everything is going to die and everything is going to perish. No wonder he came and he died for us. Hallelujah. Gave his life for us. Praise the Lord. So that we could have life. Praise the Lord. So the greater light represents God. Amen. It represents Jesus Christ. He is the greater light of your life. If you are seeking help from anywhere else and you are not seeking help from the greater light, how do you expect your life to change? Amen. So he is the greater light. He governs the day because he understands that that is the season that my sons and daughters are awake. I need to minister to them when they are awake. I need to release to them when they are awake. Hallelujah. He governs. Glory be to, the, to God. The day. Hallelujah. He watches over the day. He says, I will watch over you. I have given my angels charge over you. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. Hallelujah. I want you to know, praise the Lord, that he is the greater light of your life. Hallelujah. He is the sun. <laughs> and we, we all rotate around the sun, beloveds of God. Hallelujah. Our life re- revolves around the sun. The earth revolves around the sun. I want you to know, beloveds of God, hallelujah, if God is not governing your day, <laughs> then there is a problem. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, govern my day. Order my steps. Hallelujah. So that my lines are able to fall into pleasant places. Glory be to God. Lesser light, the lesser light are those that are put on the earth to help you in times of darkness. These are your destiny connections, your divine connections that God associates yourself associates you with hallelujah he says the let lesser light I have put forth amen so in times of trouble they're gonna bring solution they're gonna bring answers hallelujah then he says I have opened up the fivefold for the perfecting of the saints hallelujah he has sent destiny connectors into the earth hallelujah to be able to stand with you and encourage you build you and uplift you in times of trouble in a mighty name of Jesus we declare hallelujah the lesser lights amen are those that function spiritually and also those that function physically because the lesser light can give you a job the lesser light can operate on you the lesser light hallelujah can give you legal advice the lesser light can pray for you the lesser light can prophesy over you are we together beloved of god but the greater light hallelujah overcomes overcomes so the greater light is Jesus. And then he appoints lesser lights, amen. In his image, lesser lights to help you on this earth. Are we together, beloveds of God? Hallelujah. And God said it was good. Hey, <laughs> And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that might be able to fly in the earth and on the firmament of heaven. And God created great, great whales and every living creature that moveth, amen, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God said, it was good. And he said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the sea and let the fowl multiply in the earth. Hallelujah. So God blesses those that are flying and those that are swimming. Hallelujah. Those that are flying, beloved of God, are those that are soaring in the season. Hallelujah. These are those that are saying, I'm ready to take off. I'm a plane. I'm ready to fly. I'm ready to go forth. Amen. I'm ready to break past the 
atmospheres and realms, hallelujah, to go for what belongs to me. So these are the ones that go high, hallelujah. And I decree and I declare that there are some of you that are going higher in the realm of the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. Those associated with the air, beloveds of God, they are those, hallelujah, that do not look at levels, they catapult, hallelujah. They go where no one has ever been before. Hallelujah, I decree and I declare that you are going higher in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. There's nothing wrong with going higher, beloveds of God, amen. But I want you to know that those of the sea, they go deeper. They immerse themselves in God. Deep calls on to the deep, hallelujah. They go deeper in the things of God. They go deeper in the anointing, hallelujah. Deep is calling on to deep, hallelujah. They are no longer at ankle level. They are no longer at waist level. They are immersed in the glory of God. They are immersed in the power of God. They are immersed in the revelation of God. Hallelujah. If you want to go deeper in the things of God, hallelujah, you know that you are those connected to the sea. Praise the Lord. You are saying, hallelujah, I serve the God that walks on water. I serve the God that calms every storm. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare if you want to so high, so high. If you want to go deep, go deep. Amen. As long as you are soaring towards God and going deeper towards God. And God said it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth the loving creature, every cattle, every creeping thing, every beast on the earth, hallelujah, after its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast on the earth after his kind, and the cattle after his kind, and everything that creepeth on the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. People of God, hallelujah, there is one creature I don't like. And in my country, we call it a kokorochi. <laughs> in your country, you might call it a cockroach. Amen. There are certain things that I do not like to see. Amen. But all of them were made for good. Amen. Each one of them has a lesson to, to speak and a lesson to tell. I don't like cockroaches or co cockroaches. Amen. Hallelujah. When I just see it scurrying, I said one day, the time when I was homeless, beloved of God, we made butternut. It's a sort of pumpkin. And the, you know, the skin of the butternut is very hard. And one day, hallelujah, I was sleeping and I got thirsty and I said, let me go to the kitchen to go and get a glass of water and when i went there there was this kokorochi with a giant giant piece of a pumpkin on its back like 10 times the size i nearly fainted beloveds of god huh, i nearly fainted hallelujah but can i tell you the kokorochi hallelujah has a story to tell the kokorochi hallelujah went through armageddon it went through world war one it went through world war two it went through world war three it went through even the time of noah it went through through it. <laughs> Beloved of God, that means it's trying to tell you that you can go through anything in life and you can still stand. Instead of the kukurochi getting less and less weaker, it's getting more and more and more and more stronger. Beloved of God, hallelujah. So you find, amen, that when God releases things, it says, let them be kukurochis. <laughs> Hey, my father, my father. He wanted to show you something. He said, let there be creeping things. Hey, did you ever wonder why God made creeping things, beloved of God? Hallelujah. Those creeping things are the longest loving things on the earth. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. They have long life. Amen. Instead of the ostriches and the peacocks having long life, God decided, no, let me make the kokorochi have long life. And they will tell you, hallelujah, that God has given you ability to multiply. Look at me, I'm a one kokorochi. I just came into your house with my wife, and now we are 4,000. Hey! Hey! Hallelujah! They will tell you we have ability to multiply. They are encouraging you, beloved. Of <laughs> Hallelujah! That you can flow. <laughs> ha, somebody say kokorochi. They can come too. Am I lying? Answer, answer, answer. They can come too into your house. And by the time you know it, they are all over the show. When you just switch on the light. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes you even get nerves to say, hey, I thank God in my house now they are gone. But there was a house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God created them to show you. To say, this is what you can do. Look at the kokorochi. Mm? Hallelujah. Look at the mosquito, beloved of God. Hallelujah. The, the mosquito knows how to draw blood. What is God teaching you there? 
it knows how to draw blood. Do you know how to draw from the blood of Jesus? God says, draw from me. Learn how to draw my blood. <laughs> the mosquito will teach you all. Whether you like it or not, it will educate you. You will move from grade one in teachings of drawing blood to have a PhD and a master's. Hey, are you hearing me? God said, let there be mosquitoes. They are here. They are here. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every animal that God created, hallelujah, has a, a teachings. Do you know you can kill a kokoroti and you will find that it will release an egg? It says, you cannot just take me out. I will release an egg. I will release fruitfulness all. Oh. <laughs> Everything works together for your good, beloveds of God. Hallelujah. So you now thank God even for your pet. Praise the Lord. Then he says, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over everything. So you find God is saying, let them have dominion now, isn't it? They must have dominion. They must take over. The women and the men that I'm going to create have the takeover anointing. They have the anointing of dominion. They are created to oversee. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God created man in his image of God, created him male and female, created he them. And then God blessed them. So number one, you are blessed, beloved of God. Hallelujah. You are so blessed. You are so blessed. Hallelujah. I want to get you to a place and then I'm going to end there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God bless them. So I speak the blessing of the Lord all over your life in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that any area of your life that was not blessed before, let the blessing begin to flow in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Hallelujah. God says you are blessed. You cannot be cursed because the Bible says whatever God has blessed cannot be cursed. Amen. That means chains and yokes have to break off of you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When God says you are blessed, it means that everything that I spoke about is now working together for your good. Amen. When you, when, when you are cursed, everything that God created begins to work together for your bear, your downfall. Did you know? Hallelujah. The storms will come. Lightning will come. It will start to work against you if you are cursed. The ground will open and swallow you. Are you hearing me? Everything will just start to turn against you. But when God blesses you, all that I have preached tonight starts to come your way. Starts to work together for your good. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. The Bible says, hallelujah. And God said unto them, are we ready? Are we ready for this blessing tonight in the name of Jesus? I am ready. DJ College is getting ready to change the channel. So number one, understand that you are blessed and highly favored. We are now moving. Amen. So God blessed them. And the first blessing that he blessed them with is fruitfulness. Hallelujah. He says, be fruitful. He says, be fruitful. Somebody say, para. <laughs> that represents fruitfulness. And I see that there is activation of para on this feed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When God paras you, it means that your womb is going to open. It means that you are going to be productive. It means that you are going to start to move. Hallelujah. It means that you are going to flourish and increase in the name of Jesus, we declare. When God says, be fruitful, it means that something is going to come forth out of your life. Hallelujah. I decree and I declare that you are fruitful. You are fruitful in every fiber of your being. Yes, para tonight. You need to para tonight. You need to flow in fruitfulness tonight. You need to blossom tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, I see para. Hey, hey, hey. I see para on the speed. The first blessing that God releases over his children. He says, let this be the season that you para. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful in every fiber of your being. Be fruitful in your life in the name of Jesus. You shall be fruitful like the cockroaches. In the name of Jesus, we declare. God said, be fruitful. He didn't say, please, can you be? Is it okay if you can be? He says, you are going to be fruitful. I prophesy over your life. I decree para over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let fruitfulness flow in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, um, to para 
means to cause, to bring forth. Hallelujah. It is not you that causes yourself to bring forth. It is God that causes you to bring forth. It is God that causes the seed to come forth. It is God that causes the, 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 the trees to produce fruit. It is God that causes para. And I decree and I declare over every woman, every man under the sound of my voice. This is your season of para. God says para. Be fruitful and multiply in every area of your life. In the name of Jesus we declare. I said you cannot be empty. I said you cannot be dry. I said infertility must go. I said barrenness must go. This is your season to para. God is going to bring you out. God is going to bring you forth. God is going to cause you to be fruitful. Something is happening to your roots. God is fertilizing you. God is cultivating you. God is moving around you. Para in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful in your womb. Be fruitful in your mind. Be fruitful in your marriage. Be fruitful in your finances. Be fruitful in your, in your families. In the name of Jesus. Be fruitful in your ministry. Be fruitful in your business. Be in your organization, para in Jesus' mighty name, we declare. Hey, shot Bahaya. I see you bringing forth her. I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus that this is your season to para. This is your season to come forth. This is your season to produce in the name of Jesus. Somebody say para. Somebody say para. God bless them. And he said, be fruitful. I said, you are fruitful in everything that you do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shut Red I see you para in the name of Jesus. You will produce some. I said, you will produce. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, God said, be fruitful. God said, be, come, fruitful. Be, come, fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, hallelujah. I decree and I declare fruitfulness flow from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, drenching you and soaking you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you cannot be limited by the power of the living God. Hey, be fruitful, be fruitful, be fruitful. Hey, be fruitful in the name of Jesus. This is your season. I said, this is your season to be fruitful. This is your season in the mighty name of Jesus. Flourish like a palm tree in Lebanon. Blossom, woman of God. Thrive, men of God. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I said fruitfulness is going to flow like a river. May God baptize you in fruitfulness tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, hey. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. In the name of Jesus. You shall para in your mind. You shall para in every fiber of your being. In the name of Jesus, you are anointed for fruitfulness. You are anointed to para. Let the anointing fall afresh. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the living God, I said you will para. In the mighty name of Jesus, this is your season. Thrive, 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 thrive. In the name of Jesus, in the Genesis 17 verse 6 says, God said, I will make you exceedingly para. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we ready for level number two? Hallelujah. Because God's blessings do not end there. Are we ready for level number two? I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm excited, I'm eating this word tonight as well. Hallelujah. You are not the only one having dinner tonight. Also me, I am eating this word tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He doesn't end there. He says, be fruitful. Number two, multiply. <laughs> Somebody say, Rabbah. Hey, shat ala Somebody say, Rabbah. 
Rabah, from para to Rabah, multiply, multiply. That means, hallelujah, that you are not going to have one business only, that you are not going to have one child only, that you are not going to have one ministry only. You are going to Rabah. That means you are going to multiply. That means, hallelujah, addition is coming. Multiplication is coming. That means that duplication is coming. Double, double, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, addition multiply in the name of Jesus multiply in every vibe of your being in the mighty name of Jesus we declare I decree and I declare that you will rub up in the mighty name of Jesus you will step into the overflow your cup will run it over in the name of Jesus I said hallelujah that whatever you touch it will move press down shake it together and running over those that are believing for fruit of the womb you will rub up you will multiply those that are believing for financial favor you will rub up in the mighty name of Jesus we declare when you rub up that means that God is taking you into a net breaking testimony hallelujah there was a woman that was picking up sticks and the prophet of the Lord said, ah, ha, ha, this is not the portion of this woman. Hallelujah, she needs to rabba. Are you ready to rabba? Are your, are your containers ready? Hallelujah, to flow, press down, shake it together and running over. Hallelujah, are you ready to rabba? Me, I'm ready, I don't know about you. I am ready to rabba. Shake it in the midst of darkness, you will rub up. In the midst of trouble, you will rub up. In the midst of confusion, you will rub up. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. I decree and I declare. Genesis 22 verse 17 says, In multiplying, I will multiply you. In multiplying, I will rub you. God is a God of more than enough. Hallelujah, somebody release more, 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 more. More of the overflow, more of the running over in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of the living God, you will rub I said you will rub Hey, say Do you know, hallelujah, that there is an anointing that is on repeat? Somebody say on repeat, on repeat. Favor on repeat. The goodness of God on repeat. Hallelujah, the glory of God on repeat. Babies on repeat. Financial favor on repeat. It just keeps on coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. I decree and I declare that as you rub you are going on repeat. In the mighty name of Jesus, over and over and over and over and over. You shall rub I said you will rub I said you will rub In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. He says you will replenish on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. I want you to know, hallelujah. He says you will replenish the earth. That means that every empty area of your life, you are going to fill it. Amen. Wherever there is an empty void, you are the one that is going to fill it. Hallelujah. Somebody say, hallelujah. There are some people that will be saying, fill me up, God, fill me up, God. God is saying, no. You are the one that is going to fall. Hallelujah, that business up. You are the one that is going to fall. That marriage up. You are the one that is going to fall. Hallelujah. God says you have ability to refill, ability to replenish. Hallelujah. I want you to know, prepare for the God in the season. Hey, hey. In the season, your sons and daughters will replenish the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, start to fill empty voids by the power of the living God. You will replenish the earth. I said you will replenish the earth. You will replenish the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Are we ready for the next level? He says, hallelujah. And you shall have subdued the earth and have dominion. Somebody say kabash. Somebody say kabash. Hey, 
Rema zotaya ba 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 ba. He says you need to kabash the earth. You need to kabash in the season. Are you ready to kabash? Lovely lady, kabash in the season. Those they want to sow, sow into the kabash. Hallelujah. What does it mean, kabash? Hallelujah. It lets us very carefully. God says everything will work together for your good, but you have to make it work together for your good. Hallelujah. Otherwise, it won't. Hallelujah. So you have to kabash it. If you want the earth to work for you, you have to kabash it. If you want your womb to work for you, you have to kabash it. You have to subdue it and take dominion. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You have to put it under, under your control, under your dominion. May you receive the anointing to kabash by the power of the living God. Hallelujah. To kabash means to bring into bondage. You are no longer allowed to go into bondage, but you can put something into bondage. You can bind the earth to work for you. You can bind your womb to work for you. Kabash in the name of Jesus. Kabash by the power of the living God. And in this coming month of April, me, I'm kabashing. I'm going to kabash. I'm going to kabash. I'm going to kabash. I'm going to take control. I'm going to take power. I'm going to take authority. I'm going to take dominion. I'm going to kabash. I'm going to kabash until everything works together for my good. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare hallelujah. He said kabash, 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 kabash. Hey, kabash in the season, hallelujah. Whatever is not working for your good, it must work. Tell it to work for your good. If your business is not working for your good, command it, kabash, and say, my business. Every man, every woman, put your business on the street tonight. Hallelujah. Put the name of your business. Declare my business. I am kabashing you today. Hey. Say, People that are sweating and sweating and your business is not producing anything. I came to announce over your atmosphere. Kabash, kabash, kabash. If your marriage is not working, kabash. If your health is not working, kabash. If your organization is not working, kabash. Take control, take authority. In the name of Jesus, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not below. I said kabash. I said subdue. I said take dominion. Dominate your atmosphere. Dominate your territory. Dominate everything connected to you. It must follow your, your lead. It must follow your rules. It must follow your regulation. If you say go, it must go. If you say come, it must come. You have the authority to kabash. You have the authority to kabash. You have the authority to kabash. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. I see a kabashing in the realm of the spirit. When you kabash, you are rearranging your life. When you kabash, you are spring cleaning your life. When you kabash, you are separating the wheat from the chaff. When you kabash, you are putting your life in order. In the mighty name of Jesus, the lessons that God taught you. He says, I need to teach my son. I need to teach my daughters how to kabash. Everything that I put on the earth, hallelujah, it can work for them. It can serve them. It can love them, hallelujah. But they need to know how to kabash. They need to know how to kabash. They need to know how to kabash. In the mighty name of Jesus, Ebrazo Tarabahaya. To kabash, amen. That means, amen, you are going to overcome. I prophesy over your life in the mighty name of Jesus that you will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. As you kabash, hallelujah, so 
so, 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 so. As you come past in this season, hallelujah, that means you're going to overcome every obstacle in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, as you come past in this season, that means that all the noise, every negative voice that has been speaking over your atmosphere, it shall be silenced. I said it shall be silenced. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you kabash, you are bringing under control. Hallelujah. Those that cannot control, be it your children, your husband, your organization, as you kabash, kabash, you are bringing it under control. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare. Hallelujah. As you kabash, it means the enemy is defeated. As you kabash, it means that negativity has been vanquished from your territory. As you kabash, hallelujah. That means you are getting the upper hand. <laughs> I want you to know that you are walking with the upper hand in a season. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, hallelujah. As you kabash, God is giving you the upper hand. God is saying higher, 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 higher. As you kabash, amen. That means you are squashing something in your life. Hey, whatever needs to be squashed must be squashed. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. As you kabash, God is giving you authority to terminate, hallelujah, the contract of the enemy in your atmosphere. You can terminate the, the contract. I see people saying, I am sorry to announce her that your contract has been terminated in my life, in my marriage, in my home, in my spiritual life. Your contract has been terminated. As you kabash, hallelujah. It means that the things that were affecting you, you disregard them. You, they no longer move. They no longer affect you. They no longer trouble you. They, don't, they no longer are of effect in your life as you kabash. Hallelujah. So you will para, you will raba, and you will kabash. Can somebody say that tonight? Hallelujah. That is what Genesis 1 verse 28 says. It says para, raba. Kabash in short. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And God said, Para. And God said, Rabba. And God said, Kabash. Para. Rabba. Kabash. Somebody needs to sow tonight. Hallelujah. There is an atmosphere tonight. Hallelujah. Para. Rabba. Kabash. Para. Rabba Kabesh Para Rabba Kabesh Para Rabba Kabesh Para Rabba Kabesh Para Rabba Kabesh What am I doing, beloved of God? Just in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Hallelujah. I am submitting this word into you. Hallelujah. Para Rabba Kabesh. And God said, and God said, and God said, in the beginning, God said, in the beginning, God said, what did he say? Para, Rabba, Kabesh, hey, April, Para, Rabba, Kabesh, hey, Apostle is saying fire, 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 amen, hallelujah. We are going to Para. We are going to Rabba. We are going to Kabesh. Hey! hey. God, listen very carefully. God created Adam to work. Are you hearing me? He created Adam to work. But he didn't want Adam to just work without producing anything. That's why he says you need to para Rabba and Kabesh. Hallelujah. God says I have set up everything for you in such a way Hallelujah, that when you para, rabba, and kabash, everything is going to be subdued and you will have dominion over everything. That means whatever sea you cross, whichever country you go to, you will para, rabba, and kabash. Any atmosphere you enter into, if you go into it for a job, hallelujah, and there are many people waiting for that atmosphere, for that job, but because you are paraing and rabbaing and kabashing, that means that you are going to get the job. Hallelujah. God says, I want you to work. 
I want you to work, but I want you to receive. I want you to be productive. I want you to be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible says, and God blessed them. Amen. And God said to them, say, God said to me, me, me. You have to learn how to make the word personal. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says, God blessed me. Are we seeing? You have to make it personal. Personal. God blessed me. And he said unto me, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, hallelujah, I have given you every herb seed. I have given you everything upon the face of the earth. It is yours and it can be for you for meat. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything I have given over you. And God saw everything that he made. Listen, who can say, who can say uh, Genesis 31 for me? Is there anyone that can type Genesis 31 for me? Who is a fast typer? Who knows how to para Rabah and Kadesh on the on the live feed? Can somebody type Genesis 1 verse 31? I'm excited, beloveds of God. Hallelujah. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? Very good. All this time, you are saying it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. But when we get to Genesis 1 verse 31, now he's saying, hey, now it is very good. Because I have given everything, I have handed everything over to my sons and daughters. Now it is no longer good. It is very good. Hallelujah. So God is saying it is in your hands. Hallelujah. It is in your hands. It is in your hands. In the season, in the mighty name of Jesus. God says, I'm, I have given you access. Amen. Very good. Somebody say, very good. Somebody say, very good. Hallelujah. And um, Susan's, uh, Susan's one is saying, God looked at everything he made and he was very pleased. Hallelujah. Somebody say, very pleased, very good. Because now everything that he made, he gave it to Adam and Eve. Are we together? It was good when it was still in his hands. But it was very good when he put it in yours. Hallelujah. So now, are you a good steward? Do you know how to manage blessing? If God blesses you tonight, if God blesses you today, will you be able to manage the blessing? Will you be able to be a good steward? Hallelujah. When God hands over to you, it's because he knows that you know how to para, raba, and kabash. Hallelujah. It, he knows that the thing that he has given you will not control you. You will control it. There is a problem. Many women and men, hallelujah, just say they receive financial ex, uh, favor. You find that the money controls them. They cannot para, raba, and kabash the money. Are you hearing me? They cannot subdue the money. They cannot um, handle the money or, or to have dominion over it. The money now takes control. So you have to learn how to para, raba, and kabash. Even in marriage, hallelujah, your marriage shouldn't consume you. You should consume the marriage. You should eat of the marriage. The marriage should not devour you. Are you hearing me today, beloved of God? Hallelujah. Your business must not eat you. You must eat your business. Hey, hallelujah. Are you a good steward? Amen. God is looking for good stewards to bless. He wants to say, very good, very good, very good. If he puts it in your hand tonight, is it going to be very good? Or is it going to be a problem? I think some, some people, if God puts in your hand, oh, very bad, very bad. Hey, very bad, very bad. I think I made a mistake there. I was, hallelujah, so you have to learn. The ground must work for you. The ground must produce for you. The Bible says everywhere your foot touches shall be blessed. Why? Because of you. You are the one carrying the blessing. God blessed you. That means wherever you go, the blessing must follow there. Are we together? Did we learn anything tonight? Did we learn anything tonight? Were you blessed by the message? Did you learn anything? Me, I learned all. I know what to do with this word. Hmm? When I was asking God, what am I going to teach God? What am I going to teach? He says, back to basics. Go back to the beginning. 
Hmm? Go back to the beginning. Let them know why I created them. I created them to para, rabah, kabash. 